say this from me to you. The bill comes due, whether or not you select us for your MBL, to be your MBO audit partner, or select another firm. Avoiding looking underneath the hood and really getting a good sense for what's happening in your MBL portfolio will not save you from the risk, it will not save you from the losses. I've seen this over multiple cycles over the last 20 years. You want to identify, you want to actually get a full scrub down and see where you stand in that portfolio so that you can get to the table faster than the other institution who may have identified weaknesses with that particular member, borrower, or guarantor because when their liquidity is gone, it is all gone. Hello, my name is Anson Cooley. I'm the owner and principal of Synergy Credit Union Consulting and Synergy Bank Consulting. I'm going to try to keep this video as brief as possible because I believe that if you stick with me to the end of this video, we'll probably be able to save you at least thousands of dollars, if, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. So just a quick outline. I'm going to give you a brief disclaimer. I'm going to talk about our experience in the member business lending audit review space. We're going to discuss the current issues with commercial real estate, CNI, and NBL audit as a as a function. And then we're going to talk about just some of the things that we can do to improve our identification of weaknesses and some of our NBL participations and in some of the NBL loans that we have originated over the last since 2020. Just a quick disclaimer, we provide MBL services. So I, I like to be upfront about that as I'm critiquing the way other, I guess, firms or other individuals provide this particular service. I like to be upfront that in a lot of ways, as I'm doing this video, I am edu selling to you that we could be your solution. So that gets me to my, my second point. From an experience standpoint, I'm a former examiner who led asset quality reviews in the banking space. When I left there, I led the loan review function at a CPA firm. Since then, I've written the AI's loan review course, both their intro and intermediate course. In addition, for seven years, I graded the BAI loan review certificate programs. Okay, so that's just kind of, I guess, the context of where I'm coming from in an experience. What's the current problem right now in the community banking world through our loan reviews and just looking at some of the reports, we're seeing an uptick in weaknesses in commercial real estate and CNI portfolios. You may have seen the bank in New York have to get a capital injection because they had severe weaknesses in their commercial real estate portfolio. And if you look at the community bank version of a deal or, or their formal agreement, one of the weaknesses identified that led to the credit risk was a weak credit risk review process or weak loan review audit process. All right. And so what I want to kind of briefly just walk through what can lead to some of those weaknesses. OK, but before we do that, you may be saying, well, and I know we're not having any issues in our institution with our MBLs because we don't have any past dues. Looking at MBLs through a consumer lending lens is the first problem, meaning if you don't have any past dues, that does not mean you do not have weaknesses in your NBL portfolio. It means that you may not have identified those weaknesses in your NBL portfolio. And what are some of the reasons why you may not have identified those weaknesses? Number one, lack of independence. You're having the same group that originated the deal also be the group that's doing your audit. And so what can happen, not all the time, but what can happen sometimes, there can be a reluctance to identify and I would say point out those weaknesses to you because they were the same group that brought the, the deal to you, especially if you are the smaller participant in the deal. Number two, experience. There are underwriters, there are loan officers, and then there are loan reviewers. Each one of those job titles necessitate having a certain type of experience or have a certain lens. A loan officer often has a different lens when they look at a problem than an underwriter. And an underwriter or credit analyst may have a different lens than a loan 
officer, okay? A loan reviewer or credit risk reviewer has a different lens when they look at a deal than a credit analyst and a loan. You have different perspectives. And often, if you are a credit analyst or a loan officer, you don't have enough at-bats or experience to identify the weaknesses from the perspective needed to fully understand the risks in those deals. And lastly, scoping. One thing you might be saying, hey, we don't have any past dues and we have an NBL review conducted annually. And guess what? They give us a clean report saying, hey, we don't have any downgrades. Let me say this. If you've been paying for a loan review audit for the last three to four or five years from the same firm and you have not had any downgrades, from my perspective to you, I would question those reports because often there's some weakness in some loan that would necessitate some kind of downgrade, perhaps not from a pass to substandard or a pass to a classified, but there's something in there. And when a loan review firm or a loan review function is reluctant to even have those conversations, you ultimately lose out as a CEO or the institution because you miss an opportunity to remediate or cure the issue which may save you thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars so what does that look like and how does that play out well from a scoping standpoint i'm seeing a lot of scopes where these entities accuse us and say we'll look at 40 of your loans for fifteen thousand dollars and i've seen that for 500 million the same scope for a $500 million institution and the same 40 loan scope for a $2 billion institution. That is not how you do scoping for an MBL review. I wanna briefly show you a slide from an Institute of Internal Audit presentation that I watched maybe seven, eight years ago where they review the proper way of conducting a loan review scope. So here's a slide from a webinar that was conducted where the subject of the webinar was how to properly do a quality assurance review of a loan review or NBL audit process. And in this slide you see here, you don't see anywhere where it says select 40 loans everywhere you go. It says these are some of the sampling techniques that can be used to actually get to a proper identification of the risk within your portfolio. So first one says loans by dollar size, essentially looking at the industry types, looking at the asset quality indicator, meaning perhaps selecting some loans that have been restructured, some loans that are past due. Look at internal or external factors that are driving risk. For example, you may look at commercial real estate in a particular area. You can pick loans by a particular collateral type. For example, a loan secured by office buildings, loans secured by apartment buildings, loans secured by owner occupied real estate hotels, what have you, you can make sure you have some variety in the collateral type that you're selecting. You can also do statistical sampling, random sampling. You can look at certain portfolio segments or areas where you have concentration. You can look at new versus existing borrowers. What I'm seeing in the credit union space for a significant amount of credit unions is that these some of these QSOs are only looking at the originations that have occurred within the last 12 to eight months, not your loans that have actually seasoned longer. Okay, next one, loans typically under the radar, meaning loans that, for example, a credit union may say for time and expediency, we only do annual, perform annual reviews for loans that are over $500,000 or loans that are over a million dollars, depending on your size. So what one way to sample and just kind of get a look underneath the hood is maybe look at some loans that are below that threshold. Another one, geographic area, looking at loans by particular officers, as well as loans to insiders. Let's say this from me to you. The bill comes due, whether or not you select us for your MBL to be your MBO audit partner or select another firm. Avoiding looking underneath the hood and really getting a good sense for what's happening in your MBL portfolio will not save you from the risk, it will not save you from the losses. I've seen this over multiple cycles 
over the last 20 years. You want to identify, you want to actually get a full scrub down and see where you stand in that portfolio so that you can get to the table faster than the other institution who may have identified weaknesses with that particular member, borrower, or guarantor. Because when their liquidity is gone, it is all gone. Thank you for your time. If you need any help with your MBL portfolio, want to have just a brief conversation about where you stand, make sure you shoot me an email. Again, this is Anson Cooley with Synergy Credit Union Consulting and have a good evening.